let's move now to a big issue for Africa. Here in South Africa, we are progressive and we're very proud of our constitution that protects gay rights. But it's not the case in other parts of the continent. Parts of Africa remain unfriendly, even dangerous for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, intersex and queer communities. Well, Nigerian filmmaker Pamela Adie joins me in studio now. She's just released a documentary entitled Under the Rainbow, using your personal life um, to tell the story of how difficult it is to be gay in Africa. Before we chat, let's just take a little look at the trailer. Okay. There was one time my mom went out and came back and said she had gone to see a prophetess and the prophetess told her that I was under attack. Her whole family was under attack. So she, she brought a, a, a gallon of some substance and it looked like, to me, it looked like gutter water. You recall that I was still married at the time I came out of the closet. So it was a very difficult time. Um, for the whole of 2011, you know, I was pretty much um, suffering from depression. It was the most depressing and the lowest points of my whole life. Pamela, you were married, as you say there, before you came out. So clearly, this is someone who's trying to adapt. What psychological impact did it have on you, trying to hide your truth from yourself? Well, thank you, Sally, for having me. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, a, a lot of LGBT uh, QI people in, in Nigeria continue to suffer very serious psychological um, trauma because you know when you come out of a closet you all you really want is love and acceptance but unfortunately um, on the African continent especially in, 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 um, in Nigeria a lot of people that come out face rejection and a lot of people uh, commit suicide a lot of people face homelessness uh, because they're kicked out um, from from their homes. Because you know, in in Nigeria, to be to be gay or lesbian or, or uh, bisexual or trans is considered a mental disorder. It's a, you know people assume that you're under some kind of uh, re religious or spiritual attack. Mm. And it's interesting. We've just had World Mental Health Day exactly. this last week, and exactly. it is not a mental disorder. It exactly. is a sexual orientation. Ex exactly. And 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 I think one of the reasons why I'm with this film was to really to highlight that to, to say to people you know we're, we're, we're human beings and this is not a mental disorder neither is it a choice mm. um, this is a person's sexual orientation that is part and parcel of, 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 of a human being and it cannot be changed I'm interested in the personal but also the political because we know in Nigeria in 2014 they passed the same-sex marriage prohibition act so that's making it absolutely clear that you cannot marry someone of the same sex. So that, that law is, was kind of redundant because um, you, know, you, you couldn't really marry someone of the same sex anyway. But uh, uh, the former president, good luck Jonathan, uh, signed the law, uh, signed the bill into law in 2014, which criminalizes uh, a person who, uh, two people who, who enter into a marriage who are of the same sex by sending you to jail for 14 years. And it just doesn't uh, criminalize same sex marriage, but it, it, it also criminalizes the uh, forming, the, the, the formation of gay organizations, as it says in, in, in the law. And it's is anybody who forms that kind of organization can go to jail for 10 years. Um, and that also includes people who support the, this gay organizations. So here's you making a documentary about being gay and running an organization. Um, do you just not go to Nigeria anymore? No, I actually live in, 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 um, in Nigeria, but um, you know, being gay or, or, or a person's sexual orientation is not criminalized. Okay. Um, so it, what's criminalized is the act and also um, uh, you know, uh, forms of same-sex uh, 
um, what, what do you call it? Um, let's say someone hold two people holding hands and walking on the streets is, is also criminalized in the Same Sex Marriage Prohibition Act. So, in terms of, of organizations, um, so I tried to register an, an organization in 20, 2017, and uh, the government agency actually denied my registration uh, and violated my, my freedom of, of association which is guaranteed by the Nigerian constitution. And so I have a case currently in court um, that's, that's actually heading to the appeals court in Nigeria because the high court um, said as long as there's a section in the SSMPA that talks about, that, that uh, sort of prohibits the formation of gay organizations, they couldn't uh, rule in my favor. Uh, completely disregarding the fact that my rights to freedom of association is guaranteed by the Nigerian constitution. And so we're, we're, we're now in the court of, of appeal asking the court to take a look at that section of the law and to determine whether or not it is constitutional. So you're fighting the laws in Nigeria. Here in South Africa, our laws are open. Yeah. We still face, though, uh, in South Africa, a lot of prejudice on the ground. We're still seeing women being murdered for being lesbian, yes. corrective rape, as it's called, horrific. How are things for you personally now? You spoke about your mother trying to give you gutter water to sort of cure you. How are things on a personal level with your family, with your circle? Is there acceptance at that level, at least? So one of the things that we try to do in, in, in Nigeria is just not to fight the law alone, mm -hmm. but to also do a lot of work uh, around social inclusion and making sure that we sort of, um, uh, you know, try to change hearts and minds and try to change attitudes and uh, try to change attitudes towards, towards LGBT people. Um, in, in terms of my family, uh, my siblings have actually come around. They're, they're a lot more accepting. But I think uh, where I really struggle at the moment is with my parents, mm -hmm. especially my, my, my mom. Uh, and, you know, they, they honestly and truly believe that this is a choice that I am making. And that you're mentally ill. Exactly. And that I need to be cured. You um, seem very sane to me, I have to say. Yeah, and very brave as well. Yeah, so um, that's kind of where things are. Where we've been, you know, we've, we've been trying to sort of see how we can move the needle, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's it's really very difficult when you when you're living in a society like like Nigeria that um, you know pe people people look at you weird and and they, they ask you know they they ask you well why why would you accept uh, your your child who who is LGBT. You know, and so you know they're they're really in a, in a very difficult uh, position, I would say, um, at the moment. Your documentary, Under the Rain, but I know there was a screening in Bramfontein yesterday. Yes. Where can South Africans watch it if they'd like to? So at the moment, uh, actually tomorrow, no, on Tuesday, it's showing at Port Elizabeth at the AFTA uh, campus in Port Elizabeth. Um, right now, the film is only available during screenings, mm -hmm. which are free. But uh, by the beginning of next year, 2020, the film is going to be hosted on a website um, where people would be able to access and watch for a fee. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in to Thank chat you about so your film. Thank you, And Sarah. for your bravery in trying to change attitudes and laws in Nigeria. Thank you. That was Nigerian filmmaker Pamela Adie.